Welcome to the Madhouse! <laughs> Hi, my name is Jackson Jane. I also have a channel and I do cover videos and such, but I love horror because it's just a way to face your fears in a safe environment. And everyone who likes horror kind of form this giant like army and packed of just epic people from all different walks of life and you don't even get me started on haunt events. So yeah, that is why I love horror and Horror Knowledge is an epic channel and you know, Horror Knowledge is an epic dude. He supports a lot that I do, so it's pretty dope. So you better subscribe. That's all I have to say. Okay. Uh. Horror is defined as an intense feeling of fear, shock, or disgust. But what do you think of when you think of horror? Do you think of horror movies? No? Okay, maybe you think of horror TV shows like The Haunting of Hill House or American Horror Story. Maybe you think of haunt events like Halloween Horror Nights or Not Scary Farm. Whatever you think of it all correlates to one idea of fear. It gives you a certain adrenaline rush that you can really get nowhere else. But why do people like this adrenaline rush? Why do people like horror? That is the question I am going to answer today. This is the art. What horror means to me, I don't know, I mean, it's just something that I've always kind of loved. It's one of those things where you can kind of sit in the theater for like a good couple of minutes, hours, uh, depending on what you're watching, and just kind of sit there and get scared. That adrenaline rush when you get scared, it just feels amazing, and started back in like the 19, like 30s with the Universal Monsters and stuff like that. Um, that's what really set the mark for horror. Um, horror to me has always just been kind of a fun way to kind of get away from life for a little bit and just kind of watch a slasher movie and just kind of appreciate the art that's on film and stuff like that. This is the first ever horror movie. It came out in the late 1800s and is only about three minutes long. In today's standards, this is not scary at all, but back then, this was considered scary. It's crazy to think about, but without this video that you're watching right here, we wouldn't have any modern day horror movies. Jumping ahead a little bit, this is the first ever feature horror film. It came out in the early 1900s, and it has no dialogue. Although it is an hour and a half, there is no sound besides music. So it's getting closer to modern day horror, but we're not quite there yet. Then, in 1939, Universal Studios would do something that would change horror forever. The first feature horror film to have dialogue. Dracula. I'm sure you will find this part of my castle more inviting. Well, rather. It's quite different from outside. On the fire, it, it's so chill. Then, that same year, they released Frankenstein. Over the course of the 1930s, we would see many classic horror films like The Invisible Man, King Kong, The Brain Eaters, The Bat Whispers, and Tarzan the Ape Man. Why? Well, this was during the Great Depression, and life kind of sucked for everyone. People were in need of a way to escape for a little bit, and if they could go to the cinema, watch a horror film for an hour and a half and kind of get away from life, then that was worth the couple cents it cost. It's kind of sad to think about, but if their life wouldn't have been so bad, we might not have horror like we have today. For me in general, the the feel of the adrenaline when you get scared, and especially when you're with people, I mean, it, it just has that kind of 
I don't know, fun to it that just makes me feel a lot better. The horror genre itself has a various, uh, has a very of a bunch of different subgenres and stuff like that. And it's from slashers to, of course, true stories, possessions. Um, I think that's what makes horror very unique. Um, you have, of course, your gory horror. You got, your, of course, your standard uh, killer horror. You got, like I said, your possession horror and stuff like that. And I think with all the subgenres of horror, that's what makes it uh, fun and unique and its own kind of uh, unique style. Um, me liking filmmaking and stuff, I've always appreciated the fact that um, a lot of these directors and stuff, the point of views they go and stuff like that, the the ways they go to, to get to where they want to go, it's, it's just always been phenomenal. I mean, look at Hitchcock, for example. He has produced and directed some of the most iconic horror movies out there, and the direction he goes is just phenomenal. John Carpenter's another one, um, and it's, it's directors like these that make me want to tune into a movie, a new horror movie, every time it comes out to say, wow, that was actually really good, or wow, that was actually really bad. Even the bad ones are fun, and that's what makes horror unique, because they can be either good or bad, and in the end of the day, that's what makes it unique. That's why I love horror. What's up, guys? Fracture Compass fam here, and uh, we were asked a question, what does horror mean to us? Mm -hmm. I don't know, horror is like such a great art form for me, it's one of my favorite genres, and just in general, I love the events, and it's just, it, to me, it's just a place where you can feel scared and feel nervous and have all these, like, you know, emotions, but in a safe environment, and I really like that, um, and I just love being scared. Bree, what does it mean to you? Um, so horror, I'm actually really afraid of horror movies, uh, fun fact, but I love bringing horror to life, so I guess... To me, it means an opportunity to create and to scare other people, Ooh. including myself sometimes. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. In 2017, the horror movie industry made $733.5 million. This was due to films like It, Get Out, and Happy Death Day. This proved that most people nowadays use horror movies as a way to escape. But what happens when horror movies just aren't enough anymore? Well, that's where these guys come in. Hi guys, I'm Jeremy. I'm Zach. We're the Bloodshed Brothers. These are the Bloodshed Brothers, and pretty much their whole lives, they've been making haunted houses that terrify people. They're the definition of haunted house masterminds. And I like making haunted houses because I like the feeling of being able to create something from nothing, like literally from the ground up. Like no picture frame goes on a wall unless we say it does. Yeah, uh, and, and why we love scaring people, it's just, or what scares people, it's, I mean, e any, everything scares people. It could be anything, like we, every person is different. So it's like, you know, so we try to incorporate uh, aspect of like everyone's fears whether that be like bugs or not bugs or snakes not snakes um, just like creepy kids dolls like whatever it is we always try to incorporate a little bit of everything that and it could be like small like we it could be like just like a little teeny doll on a shelf or it could be like a full doll character you know whatever um, and why I love making haunts is it's it's fun um, and it is it's fun watching people appreciate and get scared for something that literally just like came out of our imaginations because yeah. like oh this might scare somebody and it does, it does and that that payoff is what makes me love it i think people are also scared by for haunted houses um the fear of the unknown like even we get scared going in to haunted houses that we've never been into before because we don't know what's about to happen so i think it's easy really to play off people's fear of the unknown and yeah, I like the way you put it, um, imagination, like something that we imagine, something that we created, and then it, it, we implement it and it scares people and it's a huge payoff, so. And we just love scaring people. That goes back to when we were kids, we stopped retreating at a super young age to lay on our parents' front porch and pretend to be dead and scare people. And it's followed us all our, our entire lives pretty much. So now we, we just, we, What's the word I'm looking for? We just, our, our passion is to just scare people. Mm -hmm. Like, so that's like where it all comes from. Like that's, 
like before we like design any room before we set up lights before we get the fog machines going it's the basis is how is this room or how's this idea gonna scare somebody yes that's that's where we that's where it all comes from Never end. Experience more mazes than ever, including The Shining, Saw, and an all-new American Horror Story at Universal Studios Halloween Horror Nights. One of the most popular Halloween events ever is Universal Studios Halloween Horror Nights. Every year, Universal Studios Hollywood and Orlando transforms their park into a place of nightmares. It's growing every year, and for good reason. It features a good amount of mazes and scare zones that are guaranteed to scare you. It's every horror lover's dream. Eventually horror movies just stopped scaring people, which is why we got Halloween events like Not Scary Farm and Halloween Horror Nights. But what happens when Halloween events stop scaring people? What will companies do to up their game? And what is considered scary? And what is considered torture? That's the thing about horror. There's no line to be crossed. Nowhere in the definition does it tell us how far we can truly go. So, what does the future of horror entail? Well, I guess we don't know. And I guess that is the art of horror. Alright guys, stay scary. And be sure to check us out at youtube.com slash the bloodshed brothers. Bye. <laughs> Ha 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 ha!